Hi guys, Gabi from UiPath Hacks here. This video is a first for me because it's the first time that uh, I've recorded at the request from uh, the YouTube community uh, by Anders Jensen. I hope I got the name right. He also has a, an RPA channel, by the way, so go check it out for some good RPA video tutorials. So I would like to propose a roadmap in this video for getting from an initial high-level idea for automation to a use case implementation, a UiPath bot. While there will be many steps on the journey um, that typically uh, might span anywhere from a couple of weeks to several months, I will attempt to mention them all, but without going too much into details uh, for all of them, uh, because some of these steps like building a use case or moderating a discovery workshop will make good topics for their own videos. So I won't spend too much time here in this video. So I've tried to draft the journey on this slide. I will just go quickly through each icon and uh, then I have one slide for each of the stages with a bit more details. So we start on the left side. Uh, we have the initial idea that could be linked or, or could have come from a discovery workshop, uh, but even if it was just uh, coming from one of the employees of the company, um, it makes sense that in the first part it goes through some high-level evaluation, and then after this evaluation there is a decision of go, no go, and we will discuss uh, in a minute the reasons why uh, we could want to drop an idea even from the start. So it could be rejected, or if it seems to be feasible, then if the effort is high to implement this idea, or if the costs are also high, it makes sense to um, build a business case for it and, uh, and kind of make a small project out of it um, and have a steering committee decide if the idea is worth implementing, considering the cost. Basically, if the, if the business uh, value uh, exceeds considerably the, the costs. And then again, we have a, a, a go no go. Um, and if it's a go, then it, it should go through the documentation stage. Uh, this is essential um, that, that uh, we have for each case uh, process design documentation, a PDD. And afterwards, it could go in the implementation phase. An agile approach would probably work best. And after that's done, go through a final code review and then go live and also make sure that this robot has proper maintenance uh, for ongoing operation. So this is the overview of reaching a final product from an initial idea. And I would like to go now into the details of each of the main steps. Hey guys, if you are new here, please hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notifications so you won't miss out on future content. Thanks. So the initial idea could come on its own or could be the result of a discovery workshop. A discovery workshop is uh, typically held by an RPA business analyst uh, that can present, first of all, what RPA is and what RPA can do and cannot do. And uh, then together with the subject matter experts, they would, or, or the, the analyst would, uh, would facilitate uh, a brainstorming and then an initial evaluation of, of the ideas. Now, an initial idea could be something like, we need a bot that would pre-populate the figures on the monthly area PowerPoint presentation slides. Or something like, we need an automation that will support the new employees onboarding process. Or an automation that would issue a daily spend report. Or a bot that would clean up our material master data in SAP. Um, so some ideas could be rather vague. Um, some of them could be way too complex. Uh, and with a, a low return on, on investment. So some ideas maybe are just not good candidates from the start. But if the idea makes sense, if there is business value to it, 
and um, if uh, it is feasible to implement or it could be also the case that uh, the feasibility is rather low from the initial evaluation but there could be ways to increase the feasibility uh, while maintaining its basis value so after the discovery workshop uh, it makes sense to prioritize the ideas if the idea just came on its own then uh, fair enough it can be prioritized for the backlog list and then the business analyst and subject matter expert should uh, should decide together if it makes sense to go forward with idea it is a bad idea to automate a bad process because it will just make it easier to continue with a bad process um, and it's always important to standardize first and automate later so don't try to automate the process with a lot of exceptions try to standardize first and then automate so after the initial evaluation it could be that the feasibility is high and then it makes sense of course to, to implement the idea if there is some bit is valued or the feasibility could be just a medium average uh, as well as the business value or the feasibility could be low and the business value high and this is a risky case because it could be a failure in the end if the feasibility cannot be somehow increased and some ways to do that would be for example uh, can the process be amended in the areas where it's not feasible while maintaining its business value or maybe is the process not very well standardized therefore it's not so feasible to implement can we first standardize something in the process and then go for automation so if the business value is high it makes sense to to think about how we could achieve this uh, and what we could change to, to make it work so if we go forward and the complexity of automating this use case is high then it makes sense to build a business case um, we shouldn't necessarily build a, business, a real business case for every uh, simple uh, and quick idea for automation but if the effort to automate is higher then it makes sense to do it and it's important to look at this from two perspectives uh, that of the total cost of ownership and that of the return on investment and the total cost of ownership is many times overlooked or not considered completely it has typically two elements one is the capex investment the investment in developing the actual automation the actual bot and there's an opex part of the total cost of ownership and that's licensing so the the bot the attended or unattended license costs infrastructure because typically you would run the bots on some virtual machines as well as maintenance and support after go live so who will take care of the of the bot uh, any bugs any issues that might come up and so on and as well as maintenance uh, of the of the so rpa solution so that's the total cost of ownership um, and then of course there should be uh, benefits or, or return on investment which should be higher than total cost of ownership um, and that could be a bit abstract to fully comprehend and to fully assess of course there is a main part to it which is cost reduction possibly even FT reduction or at least overtime reduction for the employees um, because they don't need to to work as much outside the eight hours time window or could be process savings um, so it doesn't necessarily need to go in the direction of FT reduction but it typically has some element of either cost reduction or process time saving but of course it could be much more than that and uh, usually it is more than that and these other areas could be a bit harder to assess or to estimate um, it could uh, lead to increased productivity the employees could produce more in the same time frame if they are 
part of the purchasing department, for example, they could produce more savings because they would have more time to um, analyze the market or to negotiate with suppliers and so on, or to take part in tenders. If it's an IT company, it could maybe produce better software and faster and then bring in more income. It is also typically making the work more attractive to the employees or even the company would be more attractive to employees and uh, people would be maybe more interested to, to join the, the company if the company um, is forward in this direction of automation. Um, it could also lead to better customer satisfaction because the customers uh, get their products or reports or information on time with a higher accuracy than if they would get it from some employees who can make some human mistakes and so on. So uh, there are many elements to the return on investment. It's not just the cost or process time saving element um, and both um, ROI and TCO should be carefully estimated and in the end presented to a steering committee uh, with a recommendation of going forward or, or not based on the result of the business case evaluation. So if the steering committee decides to go forward, then it is time to prepare some serious documentation. And this is the process design documentation prepared by the business analyst with the SME together. And it makes sense to spend a lot of time here because typically the time spent here is saved from the implementation time. If an RPA developer has a very good PDD document, he typically should go rather fast through the implementation phase because he doesn't need to go back and forth and ask questions or make decisions or uh, just uh, assumptions on his own and so on. So the PDD should contain at least the following pieces of, of information, uh, a process overview, with a business description, uh, why and how should the process work, some details on feasibility, on complexity and any risks identified from the beginning. Uh, of course, it should have all the inputs and outputs for the process. It should um, list the involved systems, including any restrictions. For example, if there are some third party online applications, they might have clear rules against bot access or they might have some rules of, of uh, not exceeding a certain volume of transactions per day or per hour or per week uh, and so on. So it's important to be aware of these possible restrictions and just be in conformance with them. It's important to have a checklist for production, so for setting the process live information about all the queues and assets in orchestrator, for example, in, in the UiPath orchestrator, or information about all the user access to all the applications, all the systems that need to be accessed and so on. So everything that must be put into place before the process goes live. And then the most important and most time consuming part is the detailed process description or a click-through process and this part is really step by step uh, as clear as possible with screenshots and so on where sh should the bot click which texts should be entered and where and so on so that the rpa developer can just follow this these instructions let's say almost blindly and be able to achieve what is expected of him and not have to make some assumptions by himself because he typically doesn't know the process and the business side of it. And it's also important to, to design here um, an environment that would allow for modularity and scalability, especially if the process has a high volume of iterations of transactions. It's important to be flexible in terms of scaling it up, maybe with additional bots if they are peaks in, in demand, in volumes during certain days and then scale it down and run it with less bots, for example. So it's, it's important to keep this in mind from the beginning because if this needs to be amended uh, afterwards, 
uh, it could result in major design changes and therefore coding changes as well. So after the process design document is developed, then the developer can start the implementation. I think it's a, it's a good recommendation to go for an agile approach, break down the process into smaller chunks, set some intermediate milestones, something that can be achieved, especially if the process is complex and uh, long to implement. It's good to give the people involved, the stakeholders, something to see, some small achievements even earlier on so that they don't lose trust in the idea, especially if this use case if this process uh, is one of the first being automated in the company and then it's important to set uh, or to help with the trust level so if the process is, is more complex and maybe it is designed to have several individual robots working together it's a good idea to build and test the first one and show it and, and continue with the next ones and so on rather than start everything and uh, not finish anything by until the end and also if the process is, is really complex um, and it could be designed in such a way that some basic end-to-end -end functionality can be developed first, set live, that would already help the company and then add more complexity to it uh, or maybe some intelligence to it in uh, additional steps rather than go for a big bang and try to get everything done in one shot and uh, just increase the timeline quite a lot without seeing results. So after the process is implemented, I think it would be a good practice to uh, have some central code review. It depends on how the company is set up, but it's good to have some governance around setting use cases live. Uh, maybe a senior RPA developer or a central RPA team could review the code uh, could you view the documentation, see if it is sufficient? Uh, maybe they could identify some improvement points um, or just make sure that the best practices are applied and the coding standards are applied, that there are no surprises later on. So after the code review, the process can go live. It can be set up in the productive environment, scheduled, run there, and uh, typically there should be a phase of hypercare where the behavior is monitored, the developer and the IT team can react quickly if something goes wrong. And uh, after the hypercare phase, then the use case can be handed over to the IT team for support. And then after the hypercare phase, there of course could be bugs that are later identified. There could be small changes um, required by the customer or there could be just surprises in the environment, like a software receives an update and therefore some screens are changing or some UI elements are changed and so on. So we should consider also uh, an ongoing maintenance. Uh, who will do this? Um, and would it be the developer uh, of the use case or will it be some central IT or maintenance team uh, that would centralize uh, all the use cases and just provide maintenance for them. So this is the overview for getting from an initial idea to implementing that idea with RPA bots. This is my, my view and my experience on the subject and I would be Happy if you guys could uh, let me know in the comments section below uh, what is your experience, uh, where you think the most issues occur, as well as any additional steps that I did not mention here. Yeah, and any other comments. So thanks and see you next time. Hey, if you are getting value out of this video, could you please hit the like button? Thanks.